Hello and welcome to Instant Nerd. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can stream on YouTube for absolutely free using OBS. So, obviously, first of all, what you need to do is go to the official page of OBS Studio, open broadcast software, and download the installer. Once you've downloaded it, install it, and once you run OBS Studio, it will look a little something like this. Maybe not exactly, but don't worry, I'll help you get it set up. If you already know how to do the settings and you have done it and just want to know the YouTube streaming process, just skip to this time frame on the video. Okay, so once you start OBS, it will look a little different, so don't worry. So the way OBS operates is that it takes scenes, which are essentially compositions of different sources in them. Sources may be an image, an image sequence, a video, like a display capture, as you can see over here. Through this display capture, you can actually see what's going on on my screen, or it may as well be a game capture mode. So to make a new scene, you just click on the plus arrow, name the scene, whatever you want, and click on OK. Now, once you've made a scene, you may not see anything because once you make a new scene, there's no sources in it. So let's just pretend for a moment that in my live scene, there are no sources at the moment. So to add sources, you come in the sources panel and click on the add source icon down here. And from here, you can choose all these different options. If you want to record your video through your webcam, you'll choose video capture device. And if you want to record a game, then Game Capture is the most optimal source. Otherwise, for any other usage, Display Capture is recommended. So once you click on that, you can make a new name for it. Click OK. Then you'll see some settings. Um, the capture mode should be automatic. You don't really need to change that. And the display, I'm going to choose my primary monitor. Oh, I'm running two. So if you're not running two, you might not see two options. And if you're running three, you may see three options. So just choose your primary monitor that you want to stream on. And then um, if capture cursor should enable it if you want to. And this one is not really necessary. Don't worry about that. Click on OK. And now, as you can see, I have another display capture. I can disable it or lock it. Locking it in place will not allow me to change its um, parameters or size. And once you click on any source, you can then click on the properties or filters. If I click on the properties, I can change these settings. If I click on the filters, I can add some effects on it. For example, I can apply a LUT and change the color correction of it. Give it a chroma key. If you're running a green screen and want to maybe change something in the background, crop it and other effects, you can explore these. In the audio mixer, you'll see desktop audio and microphone. Now, you can customize uh, these individually. If you click on this little icon, it will disable it. So for recording videos, I usually have my desktop audio disabled unless it is something music related I'm recording or if I want the sound of the application. For now, I have it on disabled. Using this slider next to the volume, I can change it. As you can see, my voice will be going up or down as I slide this. I usually keep this down to minus 2.6. That just works for me you can change it to however you like and i do have two filters running on my microphone so if you click these little three arrows over here you can go to filters then you can add some audio filters and for any sort of microphone i recommend two filters noise suppression and set it to rnn noise which is just automatic and it does the best job to disable any sort of background noise and then gain just set it to three and you're good to go if you don't see these over here it's because you haven't added them yet so click on the add icon and then add noise suppression and after you've done that then click on it again and add gain okay so let's talk about the settings in obs studio on the right side of your screen you'll see this big button over here that says settings click on it once and it will pop up in the settings in the general tab you don't have to really change anything but i do recommend to enable the system tray option over here what it allows you to do is that it allows you to access obs studio from down here it gives you a wide array of options which can be useful at times so that's all for the general tab for now you can also go to appearance over here and change the look of your obs studio if you don't like the default you can go back to the classic gray look that it came with when it first came out but uh, there's also some other options you can go to rackney if you want a more colorful option i just don't really like that you can also choose light but it 
I just find it too bright for my eyes, so I'm just gonna go back to default. But you can choose whatever likes, but you can choose whatever suits your eye the best. The next and most important tab is stream, but I will come back to it later since we need to change it to YouTube and we will need to open up the browser and pull up the stream key from there, which we'll do later. First, I'll talk about output. So um, you can change your output mode to simple or advanced. I don't really find it necessary to go to the advanced tab unless you want to change your rate control to variable bit rate, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. To keep this video simple, I'm just going to use the simple tab. And this is what I recommend for people who are just getting started with OBS. So for the bit rate, I highly recommend if you have a fiber internet connection with the speed upwards of 10 Mbps, just change this to 3500 or 4000 kbps. If you get lag at 4000 kbps, then try 3500, otherwise just reduce it down to 25. So the audio bitrate, if you are streaming anything music related, if you're doing a music stream, then it is recommended to stream at 320, but otherwise in most use cases 192 is just fine, because YouTube is going to compress your audio to 128 bits anyways, so I don't really see the reason why you would use any higher quality than that. For gaming and general use, 128 is just fine, but just for the sake to avoid a little bit of compression, we're just going to keep it on 192. It is completely fine. Now for the video encoder, you'll see a few different options over here. I am running an NVIDIA GPU, and if you are as well, then you'll see this NVENC H.264, and I do recommend to use this if you have an NVIDIA GPU. If your GPU is not powerful and you have a powerful CPU, then use software x264 but since my gpu is more powerful than my cpu i'll use hardware and vank h.264 and call the preset just put it to slow good quality this is usually the best option and that's about it for the streaming tab i'm just gonna ignore recording for now uh because we're not gonna be recording in the audio tab you want the sample rate to be 48 kilohertz and other than that it's all good now this is where you might get a different um, scaled resolution than your base resolution. If I was using my other monitor, it will be 1600 by 900. But resolutions like this are not supported by any streaming platforms, so it is generally recommended to just output or scale your resolution to either 720p which is this one over here, or 1080p, which I have selected already here. So I'm just going to go to the base canvas resolution. 1080p goes to 1080p. In the common FPS values, you want it to be common FPS values and just change it to 60 especially if you are streaming video games. If you're streaming anything other than games and are experiencing a little bit of lag, then reducing it down to 30 will reduce your lag as it will use way less upload, as it will use way less upload speed. But I'm going to keep it to 60 for now. And under hotkeys, you can set your shortcut keys, which are exponentially helpful especially when you're streaming video games and accessibility you can change different colors and in the advanced tab there's not really a whole much to do although i do recommend to uh, change your color space to rec 709 especially if you edit your videos and you use this if you use obs for recordings srgb might give you better colors as well but i find that rec 709 is usually much better in terms of compatibility so that's about all what we're going to do with the set Settings. Now we'll set up the stream using the stream tab. So first of all, what you want to do is change this to YouTube RTMPS. Okay, so there are a few different ways that you can set up your stream on YouTube. You can connect your account or use your stream key. So uh, I'll show you with the stream key how to do this. First of all, you need to open up your browser and go to YouTube. So once you're on YouTube, make sure that you're logged in with the account that you want to stream on and then click on the upload button right over here on the top right corner. Once you click the upload button, it will take you to your YouTube studio. Just click on close since we don't want to upload any videos. In the right top corner, click on create and click go live. So once you're at this page, click on edit. So you can enter your title and description over here according to your needs. And if you scroll down, you'll see visibility over here. If you set it to public, then everyone will be able to see your stream. Um, but for the sake of this video, since this is a test 
uh, stream and I don't want it to go public on my channel. So I'll just uh, keep it on private and that's done. You can choose the category over here. If you're streaming a game, then you'll put it to gaming and then choose the name of your game. But for now, I'll just keep it on education. Click on the thumbnail to change it uh, if you've made a custom thumbnail, which I do recommend. Over here, you can add it to any playlist on your channel. Scroll down and for the most part, you don't want to make videos for kids unless it's for YouTube kids. So just know it's not for YouTube kids and you can enable age restriction if you want to. But I generally recommend not to restrict your videos. And scroll down. There's no altered content, so click on no. All of that is fine. You can enter the tags over here for people to find your stream via the search the youtube search and then the language all of these are fine the comment moderation you can turn that off so that uh youtube doesn't automatically hide any comments and just sort by the newest comments and the customization you can see if you want to enable live chat and live chat replay some other settings that you can change and once you're happy with what you have, click on save. Now, the most important thing here is your stream key. So you're just going to copy that. And I'm going to go to OBS and use stream key. I'm going to paste my stream key over here. Just control V and apply it. If you sign into your Google account, it will show you your live panel over here and you wouldn't have to enable the browser or open the browser on another separate monitor so it is generally recommended for you to sign in so i'm just going to enter my email over here and sign in So as you can see, I'm signed in over here. You can select your channels. I'm going to select my main channel that I want to stream on. So says streaming software is connected. We'll just click on start streaming. And over here, as you can see, it just changed to excellent. So it means it is getting my data. So if we go to the browser now, you can see that your stream is actually live. And if you want to end the stream, then you can end it from the top right corner here or just go back to um, OBS and click stop streaming over here. That will stop your stream. And after a little while, when the YouTube live mode stops receiving data from your software, as you can see, it already did. It's loading already. So it will end the stream any second now. As you can see, no data. This stream will end shortly unless you restart it in your streaming software. So that's how you stream on YouTube using OBS Studio. I hope you guys learned something. And if you have any comments and questions, just post them down below and I'll see if I can help you with those. Thanks for tuning in to Instant Nerd. Have a good one.